1937 the German balloon Hindenburg ended in flames and killed 35 people. The curious thing is that it did not use helium because the United States had a monopoly and refused to sell it to the Nazis, so the German engineers opted for hydrogen, a more flammable gas. That's enough to keep it from... It burst into flames! Get it started, get it started! It's flying and it's rising! It's rising terrible! Oh my, get out of the way, please! It's burning and bursting into flames and, and it's falling on the morning fast and all the folks between that this is terrible, this is one of the worst catastrophes in the world. Oh, it's... it's, 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 it's flaming, 20... Oh, four or five hundred feet into the sky, and it, it's a terrific crash, ladies and gentlemen, the smoke and the flames now, and the flame is crashing to the ground, not quite to the mooring mass of the humanity, and all the fans are just screaming around it. This event marked a before and after, since the world would not look favorably on vehicles using hydrogen, but are they really dangerous? Let's find out. In recent years there has been much talk about electric cars, there are those who are in favor and those who are against, regardless of opinions, this technology has some problems, and one of the most important is its battery, for this, transportation experts have high hopes in another interesting propulsion technology, an emission-free alternative without long charging times. Specifically, it is the hydrogen electric drive. But how does a hydrogen car work? What is a fuel cell system? What are its pros and cons? This and more, we will answer here, so that you will have a solid understanding of this technology. Let's get started. You have probably heard that hydrogen is the most abundant element in the universe, and while this is true at the atomic level, it is rarely found in its pure state on Earth. This versatile element tends to bond vigorously with other elements, making it an extremely efficient energy carrier. To obtain pure hydrogen, a considerable amount of energy is required. Currently, much hydrogen is produced by decomposing compounds such as natural gas, CH4, with carbon dioxide, CO2, as a byproduct. This method, while effective, poses challenges in terms of sustainability, due to its connection to fossil fuels. For this to be sustainable, we need the pure hydrogen to be fed through a fuel cell, which we will talk more about in a moment. This cell interacting with oxygen, the hydrogen releases energy efficiently, generating electricity and powering vehicles in a clean and sustainable way. In this process, only water vapor, H2O, is expelled. Wonderful, but how does this battery work? Now, now, let's focus, focus on, on the amazing technology behind the hydrogen cars, autos de the fuel cell, a system that performs a process that known as reverse, reverse electrolysis. electrolysis. When the hydrogen flows from the car's tanks into the fuel cell, it meets oxygen taken from the ambient air. In the cell, the hydrogen is split into protons and electrons in an electrochemical reaction. Throughout the universe, but is most commonly found in water. And we can separate the hydrogen from the oxygen in water using electricity. Renewable electricity powers our electrolyzers, which use a special proton exchange membrane, accompanied by a negatively charged cathode and a positively charged anode. When water is pumped to the anode, it gets split into oxygen, hydrogen ions or protons, and electrons. The protons are then conducted through the membrane to the cathode, where they reunite with the electrons to create green hydrogen. And yes, you guessed it, hydrogen cars also have an electric motor. But how exactly does it work? Don't worry, we'll get to that shortly. Moving on, it is important to note that this battery is noticeably more compact and lighter than a conventional electric car battery. Moreover, it is continuously recharged thanks to the constant production of energy in the fuel cell, ensuring continuous efficiency in the driving of these vehicles. Isn't it simply fascinating? We already know what a hydrogen fuel cell is, but now what is a hydrogen car? Now we can talk about the cars as such, as I mentioned earlier, 
hydrogen cars are equipped with an electric motor, which places them in the category of electric vehicles. But, how are they different? Good thing you're wondering? Unlike conventional electric vehicles, hydrogen cars do not rely on a built-in battery to store electricity. These vehicles have their own onboard power plant. Herein lies the crucial difference from other types of electric vehicles, such as all-electric or plug-in hybrids. While conventional vehicles can charge their batteries from an external source, hydrogen cars generate their own electricity internally, eliminating the need for a power outlet. And the centerpiece is the fuel cell, which acts as an efficient onboard power plant. Before we continue, we must understand the classification of electric vehicles. Technological advances in electric mobility allow automakers to offer an ever-expanding range of vehicles, making it easy to lose sight of all the developments. Here I bring you the classification, so that we understand much better. An all-electric vehicle, BEV, battery electric vehicle, runs strictly on electricity. It has no combustion engine, so it produces no local emissions. Unlike a combustion engine, an electric vehicle uses electricity from a battery instead of fuel combustion to drive the engine. The capacity of the battery determines the range of the electric vehicle. Unlike an electric vehicle, a hybrid electric vehicle, HEV, has a combustion engine and an electric motor. Depending on the car, the two engines may be independent of each other or work in tandem. The degree to which hybrids function as electric vehicles depends on their electrical performance, their electrical range and the range of their charging system. There are two types of HEVs, mild hybrids and plug-in hybrids. The electric motor of a mild hybrid assists the combustion engine. It is activated when a large amount of fuel is consumed, especially during startup. This allows mild hybrids to reduce their fuel consumption and emissions. And the batteries are automatically recharged with regenerative braking. While a mild hybrid car captures electrical energy only while it is running and can therefore only supply a limited amount of power, a plug-in hybrid, PHEV, plug-in hybrid vehicle, is also capable of recharging its battery when parked at a charging station. And finally, the hydrogen cars we already talked about. Which one do you like the most? Which one do you think is the best? Leave me your opinions in the comments. First of all, these vehicles operate exclusively on electricity, providing a driving experience comparable to that of electric cars. You will experience dynamic and virtually silent acceleration, thanks to electric motors that generate torque, even at low speeds. The main advantage that sets them apart is their fast refueling time. While electric cars may require a variable refueling time, between 3 and 4 minutes to fill the hydrogen tank. This efficiency brings refueling convenience on par with that of a conventional car. In addition, hydrogen cars offer a range comparable to that of electric cars with high-capacity batteries. A single refueling allows a range of 400 to 500 kilometers to be covered, regardless of the outside temperature. However, a clear problem is their lack of refueling stations, as hydrogen refueling is done through specialized refueling stations, which are part of an ever-expanding infrastructure worldwide. In Germany, for example, studies indicate that an infrastructure combining electric charging and hydrogen refueling stations is generally more cost-effective than an electric-only infrastructure. To this end, vehicle manufacturers such as BMW have teamed up with hydrogen producers and filling station operators in initiatives such as the Clean Energy Partnership. This collaboration aims to boost the expansion of the refueling infrastructure. So far it sounds very interesting, but will there be risks? Let's see. The safety of hydrogen cars is a common concern, especially considering the flammability of hydrogen. However, it is important to note that effective safety measures have been implemented to mitigate any risks. When hydrogen reacts uncontrollably with oxygen, an oxyhydrogen reaction occurs, which is flammable. 
To prevent uncontrolled reactions during the operation of fuel cell vehicles, hydrogen is stored in thick-walled tanks specifically, designed to ensure safety. Rigorous crash tests have validated the effectiveness of this design, demonstrating that the tanks withstand impacts without damage or hydrogen leakage. Nexo uses high-tech cutting technology for hydrogen storage fuel tanks. In this one, comes up with five different layers. Layer one, high-density plastic. Layer two and three are for structural layer, which is for protection, dome protector, and fireproof, which is a flame-resistant composite material. In a collision such as this, high voltage coming out of electric stacks is completely shuts off. In the event of a collision such as this, high pressured hydrogen control unit shuts off all the walls connecting to the hydrogen fuel tanks. In the event of rear collision, structure around the fuel tank are crushed, but fuel tanks will be intact. It is essential to remember that hydrogen technology is not new and has been proven in a variety of applications. Industries such as refineries have been using hydrogen as a process gas for decades and safe hydrogen storage and pipeline systems exist. When compared to other automobiles, hydrogen cars are considered as safe as any other vehicle. The high-pressure tanks are designed to withstand crashes at high speeds without leaking or rupturing. Despite skepticism related to historical events such as the Hindenburg explosion in 1937, el dirigible alemán Hindenburg realizó su primer viaje comercial sobre el océano Atlántico en 1936. Un año después, el que hasta entonces había sido el objeto más grande puesto en vuelo por el hombre, se incendió y se estrelló al intentar aterrizar en Nueva Jersey. And to date, no injuries or deaths specifically related to hydrogen components have been reported in the small number of vehicles sold. The few fuel cell-powered models already available on the market continue to have higher costs compared to electric cars equipped with batteries or internal combustion engines. Several reasons contribute to the current cost disparity in hydrogen cars. First, full industrialization of production has not yet been fully developed. In addition, the demand for platinum, which serves as a catalyst in the generation of electricity in fuel cells, also exerts its influence on prices. However, it is crucial to note that the amount of platinum required for automotive fuel cells has seen a considerable reduction, marking a move in the direction of making this technology more accessible over time. As for costs, a kilogram of hydrogen at California stations ranges from $10 to $17, equivalent to a range of $5 to $8.50 per gallon of gasoline to cover the same distance. To counter this disadvantage, manufacturers such as Honda, Hyundai and Toyota have implemented strategies to encourage the use of hydrogen vehicles. They offer their lessees and buyers free hydrogen fueling periods. For example, a Toyota Mirai can come with up to $15,000 in complementary hydrogen, and a Hyundai Nexo includes the same amount in a three-year lease or up to six years of ownership. However, it is important to note that once these offers expire, drivers are faced with standard costs. Comparing hydrogen, priced between $5 and $8.50 per gallon, to charging an electric vehicle overnight, where the gasoline equivalent is typically between $1 and $2 per gallon, reveals a significant difference in terms of long-term operating costs. While hydrogen cars offer zero local emissions driving and fast refueling times, their adoption faces significant hurdles such as high upfront costs and the need for a more extensive refueling infrastructure. 
despite promising collaborations between manufacturers and progressive cost reductions in the production of hydrogen vehicles, competition with electric cars and established electric charging infrastructures raises questions about their long-term viability. As technological advances and collaborative efforts continue to shape the landscape, the future of hydrogen in the automotive sector will depend on solving these challenges and providing sustainable and economically viable solutions for consumers. What do you think about this type of technology? And do you think hydrogen cars will be the future? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. See you next time.